So as I was beginning to put together today's show, I realized that this was going to be a, probably another one of those shows to remember. And so I'm glad that those of you that were able to make it, those that couldn't make it, definitely going to want to listen to the entirety of this show. Now, recapping on where we've been on this journey, we now realize that we are living in a world where wearing masks is nearly mandatory. They enforce this through edicts, guilt, and of course, social pressure. And we and other channels have looked into this and talk to you about this, about the psychological and spiritual fallout that occurs when we're forced to wear masks. We dug into this and how that the Sharia law very closely follows some of the same social distancing and mandatory face covering rules that they have for women in the Islamic faith. And now many of those very same aspects are now extended to men so in essence, they're feminizing them under that law. Now, other channels have also compared the draconian mask measures to techniques used to extract information from bad actors that we are told exist around the world who wish to harm America. So why is the world order so fixated on mandatory masks? And why are fact checkers so diligent about discrediting any information that demonstrates the harm that masks can do? These are some of the questions that we're going to be answering today. And maybe we'll find some answers in these Illuminati cards. Now, before we get into this, I've got a couple other things that we're going to look at before we get into these cards. And First, we're going to start with the Justinian plague. Now, we had just discovered these links between Trump and Justinian and also Justinian's plague. We just looked at this like last week. Lo and behold, the Atlantic releases this story days after talking about and comparing this plague or the CV spamdemic to Trump's plague. Now they're calling it Trump's plague, right? And we knew this was going to happen. And this doesn't mean I really believe this is Trump's plague. But what this is, is it's more synchronicity. Relating everything back full circle. And again, this was just days after we covered this on this show. Now, I also wanted to recap Trump's flight log connection to egg stain. Yeah, I got a lot of pushback on this one. And this happens. Anyone who criticizes Trump... Just like I got the same thing when I criticized Obama during the Obama years. I had the same thing happen and ran into a situation where, you know, I got a lot of pushback, a lot of haters. Okay. I'm going to show you some things today just to round this out for those of you that have ill feelings toward me. We're still doubting Trump. Um, I'm going to show you a couple things here that have not been answered. So. Some people claim that Trump in no way was involved in Eggstein's sordid life. Here's the facts. The day after new court docs came out that corroborated basically what Mark Eggstein was saying in his deposition years before that, he stated that Trump was a frequent flyer. Uh, we're going to start calling it the LL Cool J Flying J Express. He was a frequent flyer. The day after that document was released that showed Trump in the flight log, here it is right here. This is when Eggstein ended up dead. Now you tell me there's no connection to that. The day after. Now, the flight log only showed one flight. So it didn't confirm all of what Mark Eggstein was saying in his deposition that Trump was a frequent flyer, but we know that we don't have all the flight logs. And we know that there's probably many times that his name was not entered. We have this one entry. So, big deal, Casey. He was on the, the LL Cool J Flying J Express. Well, here's the problem. Everybody knew the name of that plane that was named after the exploitation of underaged people. End of story. 
it would be like if we found out Oprah attended a Triple K rally. Uh, hello? There would be questions. What are you doing there? It's no different with Trump. Now, let's move on from that. I wanted to just round that out and clarify because people were calling this fake news. Trump never wrote on the LL Cool J Express. Of course he did. And it came out the day before Eggstein was offed or disappeared. Now, here's the crazy thing. The one flight that he was on, he was on with Ghislaine. This was in 1997. He was with Eggstein, of course. He was with Mark Eggstein. He was with Eggstein's brother, who said that Trump was on there a lot. So, is Trump's, I mean, is Eggstein's brother lying? Is Mark lying? He could be, but this right here confirms that he's not lying about it at least happening once. Why would he say, why would he say, it happened many times if it only happened once. That just doesn't make any sense. If you're going to lie, lie big, right? Trump was on the plane. And Eggstein rode on Trump's plane as well. They flew on each other's planes. So. Now. I've got some different tabs pulled up before we get into these cards. We'll pull those up at the end of the show. On to this next tab here. Now. This is Katy Perry, of course, and she released this music video, and this was right in the, the middle of the spamdemic, right? And it was also just happened to meet Pride Month, and this really confirms our smiley face discovery. The smile now, cry later, eclipses, and in the video, you also see uh, Katy Perry bathed in daisies. Pull that up. Now, what does this mean? Well, we'll get into that. But first, I want you to notice that if you look here, you're going to see that they almost seem to intentionally create the triangle within the circle behind here in the shadows here. So she's holding the circle the triangles here. This could be caused by the spotlight probably shining onto the triangle, most likely. But make no mistake, they intentionally did this. And this has occult meaning. Let me show you what that is. Now here are all of the different uses of the triangle inscribed within the circle. And this music video is absolutely loaded. We're going to break it all down. Triangle inscribed inside. Let's pull this up a little bit. Is an ancient occult symbol dating back to the ancient civilizations. Just as other occult symbols and beliefs have been used and modified by secret societies and groups over the centuries in the same transformation over the ages. Most commonly we find the symbol is a circum circumscribed triangle, which is an equilateral triangle within and touching a circle at each vertex. But there are other occasions when the triangle is placed well inside the circle, not touching the sides. Another later addition is the introduction of an object inside the triangle. So, this is basically what they're saying here. This is Lucis Trust. This is the devil inside the circle, is what this really represents. And they're always dropping these little hints inside of these music videos. So, I wanted you to understand that this was done on purpose. This little circle triangle that she dropped in here. Very occult meaning. And you can, I'll link that so you can read that further. It's also the Alcoholics Anonymous symbol. Now, obviously, pushing up daisies or basically is representative of death. And this is the reference that she's making here. And she confirms this in her own lyrics. Let's look at this. There's a screenshot from the music video. It says, tell me that I'm crazy, but I'll never... Let them change me till they cover me in daisies, daisies. Okay, so obviously she's talking about death, right? Now, no big deal. But where have we seen these daisies before? Well, I pet goat too. We saw the daisies. There was actually one daisy in the hat of Baron Samadhi. 
here it is here and you can see at the top of his hat here because he is all about death so of course daisies are going to be associated with him and so this is what this is really all about now we're going to take a quick look at this music video because it's very important there's more symbols in it but before we do check this out this is the 4th of July it's also New Year's why because in Haiti where voodoo is from and Baron Samadhi is from their New Year's their Independence Day is our New Year's Day it's like January 1st or December 31st so there is this crossover and the crossover is very real Let's look at this video because there's even more symbols in it. Now, what they do here, she reinforces the spam demic, right? The CV spam demic. She's eating this Chinese food. Obviously, that's a connection to where it originated or where they're telling us they're originated from. Put this on slow motion. Okay. She's flipping these noodles out of, out of her Chinese food box. And they also show glove wearing. Right? Now, she's doubling it as something that she's using to clean. Right? She's like a cleaning lady. This is all of our heads inside of a box. Cover me in daisies, covering me in death. So this really represents. Oh my gosh. There's the glove reference, sanitation, which they're, the, the real crazy people are just putting gloves on. They're putting bubbles over their heads. All of our heads inside are inside this box. Our mouths are covered. See this? Only the mouth and nose is revealed. That's opposites. Okay, remember we looked at the color yellow. Yellow means illness, sickness, mental illness. That's what yellow represents. Many people have decoded the number yellow in its negative um, light. Now, yellow also has a positive, positive meanings as well. But obviously in this case, these are negative meanings. So here we are. There you see her with just her mouth and nose uncovered. That's opposites because really all of our mouths and noses are covered. And basically, she wants us to rebuild our world inside the box. That is what I believe the purpose of this music video was to do. This sorcery to make us all feel like, hey, we'll just rebuild the world inside the box. And the lyrics actually reflect that. The lyrics actually reflect that. Talking about she's going to build something out of what we already have. Why did we put all our hopes in a box in the attic? I'm the long shot. I'm the Hail Mary. When did we all stop believing in magic? Showed them I could build a house. Took those sticks and stones. So this is obviously dovetailed and metaphor into the, um, the Pride Month. Okay. So this is all about resisting uh, hate. Right. This is what she really wants to promote here. Can't cancel pride. This is what this remake video was all about. It was basically telling them, oh, we can't cancel pride. Now, it's interesting. As a YouTuber, we got all these notifications during Pride Month. Many of you will remember this. And they tried to dovetail Pride Month with what was happening in America with, um, how are we going to say this? The racial tensions, right? And African American rights. They tried to dovetail all that in, and they tried. They basically told the the pride people, "Hey, um, can you take a back seat and let's focus on black people this month because we all have the same struggles." This is what they said. We got a notice in YouTube. Uh, we all have the same struggles, and there are many of our uh, pride brothers and sisters who are also black. And they tried to dovetail all this. And I don't know how the pride community took this, but this is what was communicated to us. They tried to dovetail in the race issues with pride. Okay. Now we know all of this is manufactured. We already know that. It's just interesting to take a look at 
how they're trying to brainwash us still. Now, there's even more to this because she did two music videos for this song. The first one was supposed to be shot, filmed on Friday the 13th of March. Recognize that date? That would be the day that Trump declared a national emergency. Here it is right here. Here's the Daisy song. She did two music videos. The follow-up video that you just saw was released 88 days after the 88th day of the year on June 25th. That's another date that you'll probably recognize. We'll get into that date as well. But here's, here's a documentation on this music video. Uh, the initial shoot was supposed to happen on March 13th, 2020, was canceled, right? That was the day that Trump declared the national emergency. And then on June 25th, the second video came out. It was like, like a follow-up video, I guess. I, I didn't know that these pop artists did two videos for one song. It just sounds ridiculous. Maybe it was a remix. Katy Perry sprinkles in her hits with daisies for rainbow colored can't cancel pride performance. So this is a, the video that we just saw. Laying in her bed of daisies. Okay. So she's really on board with this whole agenda. And you see it there. And um, this released on June. Tw this was June 25th when she released this follow video. Here it says here right here. Okay. So, here, on to the next story. Enough of Katy Perry. You guys hear about this? A three-story building that came down in New York. But, miraculously, nobody was hurt. Why? Because people were following social distancing and quarantine orders. And the gym was empty. Really? More pre-programming. Make you feel like they're keeping you safe. This is in Brooklyn, sending people phone, this building phone. People dodging the debris as they scrambled for cover. Amazingly, one person. I want to hear her talk. CBS 2's John D. Yes, there's more right now from Carol Gardens. Shows a sunny and go. busy Wednesday afternoon yeah. on Court Street, quickly swallowed by Does a cloud of smoke. That happened 19 Pedestrians years ago? are seen running for cover. That smoke, the aftermath of Body Elite Jim, suddenly Jim. collapsing. That would have collapsed right on top of because it. Because was so such a distance. I guess Unbelievable. Anybody. People buy this stuff all the time. So, let's get into these cards. Connected first. Get into these cards because I found some crazy stuff in these cards. As though we are right on. Now, here's the first one the Irish flu. Now, the first thing I want you to take note of is that. There is a smiley face that appears again. This is like Where's Waldo, right? Can you guys find the smiley face on the Illuminati card? I'll give you a chance to see if you can locate it before I zoom in on it. Now, this confirms all of our findings about the smiley face being a metaphor for spamdemic. Remember, smile now, cry later, all the videos that we did? Well, look at his face. That's the cry later. And you're going to see a smiley face and a sad face in the crumpled paper. Let's zoom this in. You can see this. Make this the uh, thumbnail. Because it goes. It's a little bit bigger. Look at what we have here. There's your smile now. And this is a sad face. Obviously, there. Look at two dots, two dots. That's those are eyes. Here's your smiley face, and and here's your sad face. Okay, smile now, cry later. Now, what is this? This is the the plan, Project Nightingale, the dual eclipses, marking the beginning, making us all feel good, handing out money. Uh, you know, we're gonna spend time with family. This is great. We're getting a break from work. 
get a vacation. Everybody's unemployment went through the roof. They got unemployment checks that, that made it so that they what did even make it worth it to like even go to work because you're getting this fat check. You guys see what that was? That was the smile now. The cry later is coming. Now, what else do we have here? Let's look at the clock. The clock reads 444. Remember that? Does that sound familiar? That's why it's important to watch all the videos on this channel because we cover every single thing that starts remanifesting. This is from the film Now You See Me. It was a magic film and it was on a tarot card. Clock read 444. The date was March 29th, which is the 88th day of the year. How do I know that? Because that just so happens to be my birthday. Let's look at this card here. Remember we did this video like five years ago? Everyone's like, you're crazy. You think everything revolves around you. I go, it has nothing to do with me. This has to do with all of us have, we're born into, I guess you can call it a piece of the puzzle. And God does that so that we can all wake up to our potential in uncovering and exposing the enemy and also proving the glory of God. Okay? Most people never wake up to their potential. They're still locked in the right-left paradigm. But some of us awaken to our potential. We awaken to how our puzzle fits into the piece of what's going on. And then what that does, as long as you keep giving the glory to God, which we always do on this channel, then he will keep opening doors for it to help other people wake up. And this is what we do here. So this is the tarot card from Now You See Me. We called this out like five years ago. On this channel, I think, actually, March 29th, the 88th day of the year, and 444, we saw the connection there. 44 is half of 88. This is the time that they all had to meet. And I don't remember the exact plot of this film, but it's weird how that's coming full circle right around back to the time on this clock. Weird, right? Now, ready for this? When did Now You See Me release in theaters? Take a wild guess. In 2013, very close to Memorial Day. And that year, Memorial Day was on the 27th. And as you can see, there were two releases of Now You See Me. One happened on the 21st, one happened on the 31st, placing Memorial Day smack dab in the middle between the two. And now you're starting to see all this connects to what's happening right now. The cry later started on Memorial Day, the particular incident. Now, Go back to this image here. Inside this stack of papers, on the right, let's take a look. That looks like stacks of money right there. Does it not? That is, says IMM, probably short for Immune the Nation, we're going to call it. So, this card says Urgent. On the top here almost looks like a stack of money. Now, who is this president here? This is a logical question, right? It's obviously not Trump. This almost looks like Biden. Weird. Look at this. Now, will Biden become the cry later president? I don't know. He wins. He could be. See, these people work together. They're opposite sides of coins. And so they're working together, the right and the left. These almost look like daisies on the wallpaper we just covered. Pushing up daisies, right? This is the sim symbolic of death. Mass amounts of death, actually. Now, when we read the card, let's zoom this down a little bit. It reveals more truths, more clues, I should say. Put this card at the top of any personality play. Victim loses its action token and cannot get another one in return. Killing the victim gets rid of the flu. Otherwise, at the beginning of the next turn, the victim becomes immune. And its owner passes the flu to any non-immune personality in play. Flu moves each turn until every personality in play is immune. Then it is discarded. Use markers to show who is immune. 
the center, for the CDC, makes its whole power structure immune to the flu. That's kind of what we're seeing right now, right? People in power don't have to follow the guidelines. They're exempt, right? Note that there are many strains of the flu. A personality who has suffered through one flu card is not immune to the flu from another card. That's what we're setting ourselves up for. If you're setting yourself up that the standard for us to have freedom is that there is a VC in place, if that is your standard, then every time a new strain comes out, that will be the standard. And they will just take away all your rights until the VC is... Think about that. It takes sometimes years to develop these. So what, you're just going to be on lockdown for years until they come out with a new VC? Just because they have a VC for the CV doesn't mean that that's the end of all of this. And then you could just take that same one each year. They're going to keep saying, oh, we got a new strain. Oh, we got a, and it's going to be another six months. Oh, new strain next year. And the year after, and the year after. You see the slippery slope. Never, ever give up your freedoms for anything. They talk about us fighting for our freedom overseas that's hogwash when they when no one will even stand up to fight for their freedoms here it's hogwash you guys now what else do we have here i think we covered everything on that card got two more cards to look at i see anything else on here it's weird so there's an inbox and an outbox the inbox is full. What could that mean? I think he's taking his temperature here. He's got fever, obviously. Inbox, outbox. Not getting anything done. Oh, this would be the shutdown. Okay, there you go. So, everything in the inbox, but nothing's getting done. Business has stopped. This is the shutdown. Boom. Done. Next card. Now, this is another mask card. And this one is about a mask that you can put on that seems to jump timelines or universes. It says whoever wears it can see a slightly different world. Called the death mask. Through its staring eye holes. And when the mask is removed, the different world is the true one. Weird. So, anybody else feel like we just slipped into the Twilight Zone? Being surrounded by all these masked people? I do. Like we're in a different world than they are. They've slipped into a different reality. The deep delusion where they're believing the lie. Now here's the last card I found. Is it here? It's called Unmasked. Look at this one. Now, this is probably the most profound of the three. Some would argue the Irish flu card is probably more profound. But look at this. Remember the decode that we did on the rap artist? You know, the guy called The Future? And he did the mask off. That was the name of the song at the BET Awards. And that 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 award ceremony occurred 88 days after the 88th day of the year in a different year. I think it was in 2013. And he was dancing inside of an eclipse. Remember that? With the C-R-O-R-O-N-A around the eclipse. Weird. I think that was a ritual. Masks are now off. For them. But for us, we've had to put our masks on. Look what's happened over the last year or two. Illuminated ones are cool now, right? All you got to do is put something on a t-shirt or a mug and it becomes cool. In one generation, we've, we've allowed our pop artists to convince our kids that they should respect, have sympathy for the cabal and the illuminated ones, or at least be curious as to what it's all about. The children are now like looking at the other side of the argument and believing the illuminated ones. Why? Because they control the world. And believe it or not, we live in a world where people actually consider selling out to have power and money. Like, that's cool now. They've made these villains, like, cool. They've made the idea of that path of selling out a 
logical path for some people or something they might want to consider. And you would have to accept that because that's all about freedom of choice. We're, we're in this do what thou wilt society now. If you decide you want to be evil, that should be cool too. That's what, they, that's what they're trying to convince our children of. So when they've got these uh, pyramids and all-seeing eyes on t-shirts, people are liking that now. It piques their interest. Now, here's where things go off the rails because remember we uncovered the secret of the Joker. Which just by the way, the film with Joaquin Phoenix released 80, with 88 days left in the year on 10-4 in 2019. And we looked at all the Trump connections. Well, look at the diamonds on his robe. Let's make this bigger. See the diamonds on his robe? Those of you with eyes to see, you've seen those diamonds before. And this patterning. Because it's this patterning. The Joker. Can't make this up. This is the Harlequin. Original name of the Joker. Covered this in previous shows. Those of you that remember and are paying attention. It's the same pattern. This is the Joker. And his mask is coming off. Now, we also know that the Harlequin in the comics is the Joker's girlfriend. Harley Quinn, named after the Harlequin. This is one of the oldest images of the Harlequin slash Joker, which is also the devil. You see the pattern very clearly there. This is from 1671. And there's, of course, a mask. Wow. So... That's what we have for you guys today. I think that's all the tabs. And uh, we'll be on here Monday, of course. And if any breaking news pops off over the weekend, we'll be back for that. But uh, basically, Monday we're going to talk and just basically show you and decode the clip that we had put together, the montage from the series Utopia. And that was, um, we uploaded that last weekend, and I'm going to break that down even further. For those that didn't understand that two or three minute clip that we did, it's going to the chat. Thanks for everybody for showing up this Friday. Seems like the channel's grown over the last two or three weeks. A lot of that, in part, is due to the viral video we just had. And also, um, Shaking My Head Productions likes to profile and feature a lot of our work, and they've got a lot more subscribers than we do. So, that helps this channel grow too. So I appreciate all the new subscribers, all the new people that show up to the uh, the live shows. We do this every single day during the week at exactly the same time. So if you don't get a notification, just come onto the channel and we'll be live at 8, 8.15 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, pretty much every single day during the week. And sometimes I'll upload shorter videos on the weekend, like montages that we'll then decode and dive deeper into during the week. All right. VC for the CV. Yeah, it's just interesting how we have to talk in code, right, Melanie? Uh, you guys have any questions? Usually keep the shows to an hour. But we're at 33 minutes. We're not going to end the show there. So let's take some questions here. People say, oh, look, confirmed. Confirmed Illuminati. Okay. Future needs to stop having something. Yeah, he had his daughter. Future even had his daughter with the mask on. And during the performance, he takes the mask off. We're very weird. I think the dancers on stage had like dark hoods. You know, I mean, how do people not see what these pop artists are doing? You know, it's beyond trolling. They're not just trolling us. Guys, literally five to ten percent of the, the world's population even has any clue about all this stuff going on beneath the surface nor do they care. And in fact, they probably don't even like people like us. So why would these people be taking the time to do to troll just 5% of the group? They're not. They're doing it because it's ritual. They're disclosing all this stuff. It's got some kind of power over these people. And so we, we, should, we should keep calling it out. Okay, And it's starting to affect our youth. Our youth are thinking it's cool to be associated with these people. 
and we need to like fight against that all right let's go into the chat here yes Jesus loves you always remember that when you're feeling in fear anxiety just remember that and those feelings should wash away from you once you commune with God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus it should all just wash away uh, part of the Joker's someone said is the Harlequin uh, imagery part of the Joker absolutely it is if you go to the Harlequin Wikipedia page it will tell you everything you need to know about the Harlequin and how it fits into the Joker and the de and, and devils Virginia they're driving with masks and gloves Now, a lot of that are, might even be like some of the uh, Uber drivers. Obviously, there's many, many Uber drivers driving around. That business has exploded in America, and here we are. And so a lot of those people are picking up dry, uh, you know, passengers. So a lot of the people that you're seeing driving around with these masks and gloves are probably drivers, right? And they're just probably going to wear that every day, all day, while they're driving around picking up people protect themselves from this from fear of what they think is happening right. crazy how when you wake up you see everything as a, a cold and satanic because it is because it is Ilium tell the whole world lies in the power of the wicked and why do you think the devil took Jesus to the top of the mountain showed him all of the riches and the kingdoms and offered it to him why did Jesus decline it could have ruled he could have been a president ruled over the world an emperor whatever you want to call it he declined it so why do we keep allowing men to rule over us when Jesus said he wouldn't do it it makes absolutely no sense at all and we all know the Bible does not contradict itself so why is it we continue to listen to these world leaders yes it's the strong delusion exactly the movie the mass with Jim Carrey that's probably one I need to look at again it's probably one I need to look at again. Pull it up. Wikipedia page. Did find something interesting. Like when it released. Now if it released on Memorial Day, I'm going to... Okay, July 29th, 729. Time of 1994. We might take a look at that film. Uh, I made a lot of money. So I got that pulled up on my tabs. Next time. What else do we have here? All right. Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at what a lot of these fact checkers are... Uh, on to you know what they focus their time on a lot of it is surrounding these masks and cv you know they they really want people to believe that this is real and it's interesting because like okay so everyone's been talking let's pull this up this one oh here's a fact check apparently they're saying that some of these nurses sent in these tests that they didn't even swab on anybody and they were coming back positive Right? Positive results. Now, this was a story. This was someone was sharing a story. Right? Now, they call this false only because they couldn't prove that it really happened. Well, how many times do they tell us information that they can't prove happened? That we're just supposed to accept? Okay, so for instance, uh, GM, right? Well, we're saying just got picked up, right? Well, how do we know? We haven't seen pictures of it. So that would be, let's do a fact check here. That would be false. We're going to say that's false because we haven't seen this actually happen. We were just told it happened. See the logic, the faulty logic, circular logic that these people try to engage in. So they're saying that this story didn't happen. So someone comes on here and says, oh, that's not true. I checked the fact checker. Well, guess what? The only way that they're saying that this didn't happen, I guess Elon Musk mentioned it. And then someone repeated the story, or Elon Musk repeated the story. 
that came from somebody else about his mother working as a nurse who sent in these blank tests and that they all came back positive. And they actually are saying that they contacted her to get proof of this. Okay. So just because they couldn't prove that it happened, we're just supposed to accept that it never happened. Okay. No, it doesn't work like that. I don't think so. Homie, don't play that. All right. So this is what we're dealing with the, with these fact checkers. And now look, there's no place on here to comment. They don't let you comment. You can't leave any feedback and that's the way they want it because if people are actually having a discussion about this like talking about everything we just talked about uh guess what their fact check would be blown out of the water right so fact checkers are not always right i think everybody knows here but these i'm just giving you some tools so that you can understand how they massage information and tweak it to their needs and desires and how they're how they're two-faced about everything and how the rules that they apply to us don't apply to them right and how they their their information we're supposed to trust them but they don't trust us see how that works so i would say i would agree with you trumpy girl i wouldn't either now, it's interesting because I want to show you guys this. This is interesting. I work this. I'm going to show you the company I used to work at. Okay, I, I worked at this company for about a year to two years. This was one of my very last jobs. I think this was in 2014. Been very transparent with you guys about my whole life. I do that on purpose so that you know that I'm not some chill or some troll just giving you information that's not true. And, and it's hard to put yourself out there. And um, this is the company I used to work for. You can go on my LinkedIn page and you'll see that I stopped working there in like 2014. These are our requisition forms. I sold diagnostic tests, all kinds of stuff. Most of it for, for women's health care. We had this swab called the One Swab. We had different swab. We had the Euro swab, the nasal swab. The nasal swab would, would measure upper respiratory stuff. And lo and behold here, they must have been one of the companies that just got approved for the testing. Look at this. Look at the cost on these tests. Let's pull this up. Yeah, I'm roasting you, MDL. You fired me. But you actually did me a favor because now I've become a whistleblower. See how that works? Fired me for no reason. So, now you see the incentive for what is happening and what we're going through right now. See this? Roasted. So, we sold all these swabs. Now, during the time I was working there, I didn't see any eth anything ethically wrong with kind of what we were doing. They did have HPV tests, but really, we were just diagnostic. You know, that's what we did. We... We, we, the doctor, we provided the doctor with these swabs. The doctor would swab and send it into our lab. And that's how the lab made money. Apparently, they made a lot of money. Or make a lot of money. And I had a territory and I ran out and this is what I did. I got to work from home. But look at how God works. Do you think I could still be working at this lab with looking at this every day? Of course not. So... The truth comes out, right? Now, um, look how much more that test is than these. Now, who pays for this? Insurance companies pay for this. Okay? Reimbursement is how it all works. Oh, this one's not available in New York. That's weird. Stable at room temperature. That's probably their selling point. They, that's what was the selling point back then was that the uh, specimens did not have to be refrigerated and so a lot of the doctors liked that because they didn't have to maintain the integrity of the swabs they could just be in a closet they didn't have to worry about putting them in coolers packing them away and all this stuff Okay, so this is what's going on now if I had still worked there and this all rolled out guess what I'd do 
I go to one of my doctors and I'd be like, hey, can you just uh, send this test in? Or I'd go into the doctor and say, hey, I'm a patient. Can you send the test in and just not swab me with it? See what happens. And then we could actually do a real test. And this is what Elon Musk and that other guy was saying about uh, the mom that worked as a nurse, okay? That, that, that the fact checkers don't want us to believe because they can't prove it. Now, obviously, you'll never be able to prove that because why? Because there's all kinds of HIPAA stuff surrounding that. There's, they, they couldn't confirm it if they wanted to because there may have been a patient attached to the test or whatever. Or whatever. You know, you're dealing with hospital stuff. You can't just prove things. This is the problem they're having, the elite are having, with trying to prove to us that all this is real. They're trying to say that, oh, we can't show you the patient because it's HIPAA, right? But they can tell us whatever they want to tell us and we're supposed to believe it. So, these are very expensive tests. Wow, this one's saying swab and serum, so that's blood required for this particular test. Oh, they hate me right now. Good, I, I hope you do. I hope you do. You lost a really good rep. But um, now I love doing what I do now much better because every single day I get to call out people's lies. And that is the best job of them all, working for the most high, walking around and calling people out and helping people wake up from the lies, corporate lies, corporate hypocrisy, all the stuff that we have to deal with. You know, this, this whole class thing, and they keep people in certain classes, suppress certain people so they can maintain power and money and riches. Them and their families get rich, and all of us are here at the bottom struggling. And then on top of it, keeping us all divided through the right-left paradigm. That's the most insidious part of all this, how they keep us all divided into the right-left paradigm. Having us pitted against one another, when at the top, they're all friends. That's the most insidious part of all this that, that just enrages me. I can deal with, okay, you got me in a class. I was born into a class. Fine. You're going to suppress people and you all get to know how to make billions and millions. But then you never ever teach any of us to, how to do that. You dangle carrots like lotteries and this and that and lottery tickets to all the poor people that almost ever, never, ever get rich. You dangle carrots like, oh, you can, if you just start a, a business, a small business, you can be rich. Look at all the small businesses that have failed. Look what they've done. And the snap of a finger, they just decided that the, you were going to be closed. See how delicate that is? But what's happened to all the billionaires? They've gotten richer through all this. Their life is not hanging in the balance. Their business is not hanging in the balance like you or me or small businesses. But yet, a lot of these small businesses are still going to go to the polls and vote for Trump after what he just allowed to have happen, happen to them. See how lost people are? And this is why nothing can ever change because we never hold people to the account that need to be held to account. The true people that should be in trouble are not getting in trouble. We just keep letting the lies roll and roll and roll. You guys, it's us against them. It's you and me and all the people that make less than $100,000 a year against them the five percent who have all the control and power so i think we're gonna end the show there i'll see you guys bright and early monday morning take care and be safe